Welcome back to my video series where I take you through apparently every single tab in Betaflight 4.3 Configurator so that you can see all the options and know what they do and how to configure them. And the reason why I am having such a big reaction to today's video is this little guy. This is a servo. I don't know a lot about servos. I, I don't really fly fixed wings very much and Betaflight support for servos is pretty bad. But I said I was gonna take you through every single tab. By God, I'm gonna do it. I'm Joshua Bartwell and you're gonna learn something today. And normally at this part in the video, I would say, if you stumbled across this video randomly, it's part of a series. And if you wanna check out the whole series so you can learn everything about Betaflight 4.3, uh, there's a link in the video description to the playlist link. And that is true. But I'm gonna bet that if you came across this video, you are more likely than usual to be actually looking for the content in this specific video because Betaflight servo support is very poorly documented. And today we're gonna to attempt to change that. But before we do that, let me just say, if you're trying to build an airplane, use iNav. Betaflight servo support is not only poorly documented, it doesn't get a lot of attention from the developers. So it, it just, just trust me, you're gonna have so much struggle and heartache getting an airplane, a tricopter, any, anything with servos working with Betaflight, except like if all you want to do is control a servo with a slider on your controller, or maybe you want to have a servo that makes your camera tilt up and down, Betaflight can do that. And that's not too hard. But if you're trying to build an airplane or something that actually uses servos to fly it, Betaflight technically can do that, but it's really poorly documented and making it work is going to be a hassle. Use iNav or RG Pilot or something, but don't use Betaflight. Okay, let's go. Next, let's take a look at this setup here. I've got a flight controller, I've got a servo, and I've got a receiver. And I just want to talk for a minute about the limitations of wiring up your servo to your flight controller, because although technically those things aren't part of Betaflight Configurator, this is probably like literally the only time in my life I'm ever going to talk about this, so I may as well try to get it all in there. And one of the things I've done is I've wired the servo's power supply, the servo's red wire, up to the 5 volt regulator on my flight controller. Controller. You should be aware that in a lot of cases, this isn't a good idea because the five volt regulator on a lot of flight controllers is only rated for maybe an amp or an amp and a half. And servos, especially if you have four or six servos, can easily draw more than that. So if you're serious about building something with servos and you need that extra power, you're going to want a dedicated five volt regulator. Uh, and you're just going to wire the servo's power wires to the 5 volt regulator instead of to your flight controller. But in this case, it's fine because it's just a demonstration. The other thing that we're going to get to later in the video, and that is one of the major struggles of wiring servos up to Betaflight is, where does the signal wire go? And the reason that's a struggle is that there is no standard servo output on any Betaflight flight controller. So you have to decide where it's gonna go and you have to do resource remapping to tell the flight controller where you put the servo output. And it turns out that m many of the pads on the flight controller simply won't work. So how do you know what will and won't work? Well, I'm gonna do my best to walk you through it. But before we do that, let's go to the servos tab in Betaflight configurator and let's talk about what we see there. So here in the servos tab, we've got this table and it's got an entry for each of the eight possible servos that a Betaflight flight controller can support. And there's various configuration options here that we'll get to, but the first thing you need to know is that by default, none of this does anything at all. And the reason for that goes back to the question of where you put the signal wire on the flight controller. Betaflight flight controllers by default ship with none of the servo outputs mapped to any of the pins or pads on the flight controller. Um, there's no reason a manufacturer couldn't do that, it's just that they don't. In fact, if we look at this Maytek F405 wing flight controller, this is a Maytek flight controller specifically made for use with, fly, with, with fixed wing aircraft, and it has default servo outputs. You can see a map there, S3, S4, S5, S6, S7, etc. cetera, uh, except that's an INAV flight controller. It doesn't ship with Betaflight, so in, that's an idea of the concept, but it's, doesn't actually refute the point. So in order to use a servo with Betaflight, we're gonna to have to go to the CLI and we're gonna to have to use resource remapping to assign the servo output to a 
pin. And before we do that, we have to decide which pin or pad on the flight controller we can use. And there's a limitation here. In order to use a servo with a given pad on a flight controller, like you can see here, I'm using the LED strip pad on this one, uh, that resource that's associated with that pad must have a dedicated timer and a dedicated DMA channel. And I'm willing to bet that most people's eyes are glazed over right now. The takeaway is that you can't just arbitrarily pick a pad, like, oh, I'm not using my UART 3 TX pad. Maybe use that for a servo output. So what will work? Well. As a general guideline, the LED strip pad will always work because LED strip needs a dedicated DMA channel and dedicated timer. And any motor output that will work with D-Shot will also, pro I think it will also work with a servo because D-Shot motor outputs require the same thing. So in my case, my JBF7 flight controller has eight motor outputs and they all work with D-Shot. If you were using a quadcopter mixer, you could have, I guess, up to five servos, motors five, six, seven, eight, and the LED strip pad, and maybe more. The real way to know would be to look in the target definitions and, and you could poke around in the CLI to try to figure out which timers and which DMA channels are used by which resources, but I don't recommend you do that. What I actually recommend you do is just use iNav if you really need to work with servos, but you could always use LED strip and if you have motor outputs that work with D-Shot, they sh should work with a servo as well. It's a bit trial and error though. You may set it up and it may just not work. And you're like, did I do something wrong? Or is it just the flight controller isn't working? And you try a different output. Let's continue though with the LED strip pad on this flight controller as the one that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna type resource and I'm gonna look for the LED underscore strip resource. If I were trying to solder to one of my motor outputs, I would look for resource motor, 87654, uh, etc. Whichever motor output I was going to use for the servo signal wire, I would, uh, I would use that one. In my case, I'm looking for LED strip, and I want specifically this piece of information here. LED strip 1 resource is pin A08. A08, I'm going to remember that. Then I'm going to type resource servo. 1, A08. And what that's going to tell Betaflight is that I have the signal wire for my servo number 1 on pin A08. And it's going to replace LED strip with that servo resource. Uh, just to be safe, I can also type resource LED underscore strip none. And that will take, you can actually assign two different things to the same resource, but only one of them can be active at a time. So you can remove the ambiguity by typing resource LED strip none, if you like, and then you type save. Now, after I make that resource assignment, let's go back into the CLI and take a look because it didn't actually work and I need to show you why. Uh, you can check your uh, resource assignments by typing the word resource. And we can see here that in fact, resource server one A08, that means that we want servo one to be on pin A08 if servo one was needed to be used by the flight controller. Well, is it? does the flight controller think that it currently needs to use servo one for anything? We can find that by typing resource show, and that shows all of the pin and resources available to the flight controller and what it's currently doing with them. And if we look at A08, we can see that A08 is currently not being used. So we told the flight controller where the servo will be when it wants to use it, but it doesn't think it needs to be using it. Here's why that is. If we go to the motors tab, we can change our mixer from a multi-rotor mixer to a uh, airplane mixer. Like, here we go, airplane. And if we were to do an airplane mixer, then the flight controller would be looking for servos to act as the control surfaces. In fact, let's do that. We'll type, we'll, we'll set airplane, we'll save and reboot. And then if we go to the CLI and type resource show, we can see that A08 is set to servo one. And in fact, there are more servos that the flight controller would like to be using for all the other control services, but we haven't told it what where those are gonna be. So it's just got servo one. If we were then to define servo two, three, and four, because that mixer needs four servos, they would show up here in the resource assignments. And if we go back here to the motors tab, we can actually see all of the servos that the flight controller is going to want when this mixer is selected. We've got 
two servos here at the nose. I guess that probably is for like a pan tilt camera or maybe a pan, a tilt roll camera gimbal. And then of course the ailerons, the elevator and the rudder. We would need to assign those manually to outputs here on the flight controller using the resource reassignment. And this is why I say that if you're gonna build an airplane, you're probably better off just to use iNav because it will predefine those and you'll just, you just plug them in or something. Whereas in Betaflight, you have to manually tell it where you want them. And you might not even have enough outputs to run all those servos on any given flight controller. But okay, let's go back. Let's assume that you're gonna build a multi-rotor. So you're gonna choose the Quad X mixer. How else can you tell Betaflight like that we wanna use aux channels to control our servo? So let's go here to the mixes screen in my radio and go down and find an unused aux channel like I guess channel seven is the one we're gonna use. And I'm going to edit that. And I'm gonna set my source for that channel as Let's use this slider right here, okay? Left slider, that's gonna be the one that controls that aux channel, and everything else is gonna be left at the default. And if I back on out here, we can see that as I move that slider, take a look at channel seven here, channel seven goes up and down. And here in the receiver tab, we can see the same thing. Aux three moves up and down when I move that slider. The other thing I'm gonna to need to do is plug in my battery to power up the servo. The um, the five volt regulator won't power the servo or anything else from USB. And you may have noticed that currently nothing is happening yet. The servo is still not moving. Another thing that you need to do if you wanna test this out on the bench is enable live mode. And that will cause the servos to come alive when you're sitting on the bench and the quad isn't armed. Uh, so now if we save, well, the other thing we could do is we could go to the configuration tab and we could use the servo tilt option which gives you two gimbal, two servos for sure. Let's save that. I know I've done this before. I have a whole tutorial about it. And go to the servos tab and we should have two servos. Uh, servo one, we're gonna choose for aux three controlling. Aha, do you see it's alive now? Aha, yes. See, now that I'm moving this slider, it's going up and down in the outputs, that's good. And then we're gonna enable live mode and save. Oh, it's working, it's working. There we go. It's tracking the aux channel. Okay, well, I'm gonna need to do some more research. I can't figure out how to get channel forwarding to work. The only thing I can get to work is to use servo tilt. And the purpose of servo tilt is to automatically have the flight controller stabilize a camera based on the, excel based on the pitch and roll of the quad. In my case, enabling servo tilt does give me two servos that I can use and I can configure to arbitrarily follow any aux channel, but then I'm not really sure how you would set up the actual purpose of servo tilt, which is to stabilize a camera. I don't see the ability to do that. Oh, oh, I do remember how you enable it. You go to the modes tab and you enable the cam stab mode. That's it. Oh, oh, oh. If we enable the cam stab mode, then it will automatically tilt the servo. Yes, yes, look, look. Do you see that as I move the flight controller, servo outputs one and two are automatically responding. Hey there folks, Joshua from the future here, and I'm very happy to tell you I have figured out how channel forwarding works. Uh, and I have to give a big thank you to Sean Morrison, Let's Fly uh, FPV from Rotorite. He was the one who pointed me in the right direction and helped me makes sense of it all. So here's how channel forwarding works. First of all, in the configuration tab, you enable channel forwarding. You do not enable servo tilt. What channel forwarding will then do is it will begin to output your aux channels to the individual servos. So for example, aux one will be servo one, aux two will be servo two, aux three will be servo three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to eight servos, which is the max that Betaflight supports. Now what those channels do is completely up to you. You program it in your mixer screen and you move the switches or knobs as you see fit. Hang on, in the command line, there's a parameter channel forwarding start. And that parameter tells which is the very first aux channel that is going to be output to servo number one. So the default is four. And this gets super confusing if you're not a programmer because you would think that 
four would be the fourth channel, one, two, three, four, but programmers like to count from zero. So channel forwarding start equals four means that the first aux channel that will be output to servo number one is zero, one, two, three, four is aux one. If for some reason, like what if you don't wanna output aux one? What if you're using aux one to arm and aux two for uh, auto level mode and, and then you wanna use aux three and aux four for your servos? You would set channel forwarding start to, let's see, if you wanted aux three, it would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. You would set channel forwarding start equals six. That means aux three would be servo number one, aux four would be servo number two, and so forth. Then, where do they get output? Well, just like I showed you for servo tilt, you're going to need to go into the CLI and you're going to need to use the resource command to assign servo number one, servo number two, servo number three to various pins. And then that's how it works. Now, here's the thing that was confusing me and making me think it wasn't working. There's several things that you could do to screw this up. The first confusing thing is that these servo outputs do not read anything when you are using channel forwarding. Let me just prove to you that this works. Hold on. Here's the servo and I'm flipping the switch and you can see the servo moving. I don't have my overhead camera because I'm just recording this in a hurry to get the video done. So the servo outputs here don't move. It bypasses all that. And in addition, if you do this, if I were to take aux one and enable it here, it would break this and make it stop working. So the takeaway is that if you are using a mixer that has servos and if you are using the servo tilt feature, then these servo outputs will show what the flight controller thinks the servos should be doing. But if you are using channel forwarding, everything in the servos tab is bypassed. What about the endpoints? Do the endpoints work? I don't know but everything in the servos tab, it seems to be bypassed and, and it basically just forwards the aux channels to the servos, everything else be damned. And I can't find anywhere else on the internet that that's documented. If you're like the one person out there who has been trying to solve this problem and I helped you, go down and hit the like button because gosh darn it, <laughs> if that doesn't earn it, what does? <laughs> on with the video. Let's continue on our mission to de describe everything in the configurator. The mid, the min, and the max set the endpoints for the servo. You can control the amount of travel that the servo will have uh, and the, the center point of the servo. And then the rate controls how, uh, the, like with a rate of 100%, then the servo goes end to end based on the aux channel going from 1000 to 2000. And if you reduce the rate, the servo will uh, move less. And if you go to a negative rate, then the servo will reverse itself. So that's how you can reverse a servo's travel relative to the aux channel. And that's it, folks. We've done every single uh, thing there is to see in the servos tab and a few things that weren't in the servos tab. So I hope you're happy with all the bonus content you got in this, which is definitely the most organized and understandable video I've ever made. Um, <clears throat> nevertheless, I have to say that I have completed my mission of taking you through every single tab in Betaflight Configurator, except the Sensors tab, which just shows sensor output, and I'm not even gonna talk about it. I did it! Yay me! If you value this kind of content, uh, I have a Patreon. Patreon's a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount is totally up to you. And I'm just going to put a little plug for myself in here at the end of this video because I have tortured myself for several hours trying to figure out how this all works and then finding out that some of it just doesn't seem to work. Or maybe I'll figure out how it works and go back and edit that into the video. Uh, and, you know, if you enjoyed my pain or if you learned something from it, uh, maybe maybe that's the, that's the, what puts you over the edge, just subscribing to my Patreon. There's a link down in the video description, and I would sure love to have you. But if not, hey, I'll keep making content. You keep watching it. And uh, hopefully that... What's it going to take if not this? I've wired up a servo for you. Ugh. I... I wired up a servo for you. Do you know what it takes for me to actually, I haven't touched servos in like seven years. Maybe I should build a fixed wing. Oh, here's the 
here's the playlist. Here's the rest of the playlist. Go enjoy it. There is no next video. This is it. This is the end. I did it. I finished this.